In today's show, we're going to talk all about beginners, specifically in the gym, preparing for results, what to expect. My goal today is we're going to try to work through common things that people struggle with in the gym, whether that's motivation, developing discipline, how to prepare ourselves for the gym so when we roll up, we're ready to rock, the do's and don'ts and gym etiquette, and then how to really just grasp where you're at with your training, become more self-aware of what you're doing, and all of this hopefully by the end of this is you're going to pick up a couple tidbits to be able to navigate your training going forward. So whether you're a beginner, somebody who's taken some time off and now you're getting back into the gym after New Year's resolutions, or maybe even a seasoned lifter who maybe is on the other side and seeing a lot of people coming in, having to deal with a lot of the anxiety of getting started. These are some tips and tricks that I found helpful with clients. This is great feedback uh, that I've gotten over the years. So it's good sometimes to revisit this and hope you guys enjoy. Before we dive in, I want to share with you guys one of my favorite sponsors, 10,000. They make great training shorts, training shirts, pants, hoodies, you name it, they make it. What I love so much about them is that outside of the wide array of options they have, every product is durable, it fits just right, and it stands up to my tough workouts as well as my everyday life. If you guys want more on this, check out 10,000 at 10,000.cc. Use my code, the Barbell CEO, and save 10% off. So a lot of the a lot of the things that I work with with a lot of beginners coming in is developing like a beginner mindset. And I had a conversation with a client and I said, you know, what are some things that, you know, looking back a year ago when you first started, because he's had a great transformation, um, both physically, but also I've noticed mentally and, and confidence wise. I said, you know, what are some kind of the beginner things you would tell yourself way back or some things that you struggled with? And this is um, the outline of this kind of came out from that conversation. And I wanted to roll through that. So we're just going to kind of go through some, some different orders here, uh, but it's not just going to be what to do in the gym. That's kind of a fun piece that we can get into later. But we're going to start off with how to just get yourself prepared to going to the gym, right? How do you get yourself out of bed? How do you uh, combat a lot of the common issues that people do, right? Uh, I'm too tired or, uh, you know, it, it's... I, I am not ready. It's too tired to get all my stuff ready in the morning. I don't have time. So some of the ways is to prepare yourself the night before. And this could be as simple as packing your gym bag, right? Make sure you, though, again, if you have a gym bag, that's great, right? What should be in that gym bag? Maybe a water bottle. If you're beginning, really just grab some water bottle, uh, you know, have your keys ready, your wallet, you know where it's at. I, I always lose my wallet. Um, so having just your normal things there. If you have to shower at the gym and then go to work, then pack your work, your work clothes, right? Make sure you have a nice bag, pack it in there, make sure you have your shampoos, all that stuff. Have all that ready just to decrease that stress in your life. Next is meals. So if you get up early and uh, or you know, and this could also go with if you work out after work, have your gym bag, have a meal in there. If you get up early, you know, maybe you don't want to eat necessarily first thing in the morning. Some people aren't doing that. Put a bar in your bag, right? Always have some bars in your car, whatever it is. That way you have food there. And that way it's there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts. If, if you're getting up, you got food. There's no excuse being like, oh, I didn't eat today, so I'm not going to go to the gym. Just minimize those excuses. So take a couple minutes and really think about what excuses that you might put out there and start to combat them. Some other things here, uh, pre-workout, especially if, you know, either post-work. I mean, I, I drink coffee. Um, some people get up in the morning, they want coffee. So prepare that the night before, right? Set your timer for your coffee. Um, maybe get a pre-workout, have it ready in your water bottle. My wife does that where, you know, she'll have her pre-workout and water bottle. It's already mixed and she just grabs it and she's out the door, right? Again, minimizing the time that it takes to prepare yourself to do the most difficult part of your morning or after work. It's very hard to work out. Just get all those have habits that form that, and that way you're ready to rock. Um, get enough sleep. That's like a big one, whether you you know, work out after work or in the morning. Make sure you're getting sleep. Uh, it's very hard to be motivated when you're not well, uh, you know, sleeping well. So that's kind of a just got to go to bed, right? Set some habits, turn the phone off. But you know, I'm not going to get into how to fall asleep and get better sleep. It's not that podcast. 
but you know we're all adults here we know what that means and and if you're staying up late and then you feel like crap in the morning and you're tired stop staying up late right your goals have to be bigger and maybe that means sacrificing going out with friends or staying up play video games whatever it is you know trying to find ways to sleep there and then the last one and this is really a big one and look at your program before you go to the gym and this is going to serve two purposes the second one I'm going to talk about later but when you do that you want to think about open your program up especially if you're a beginner right like a lot of my workouts that I give there's videos with everything and you know videos might be one two three minutes and they're very instructive very informative so brief yourself just like you prepare for a meeting right view your workouts as not you just show up and go through the motions right because if that's how you're going to attack your workouts you're not going to get results right anything good is worth working for so you want to make sure that when you open your your program up make sure you have a program which we'll get to later Look at the exercises, brief yourself, familiarize yourself, envision yourself in the gym, right? Like make sure when you, before you start going to the gym, do a little walk around of the gym, kind of get an awareness of where the things are. That way, when you're in the gym, you're not like a deer in headlights or a lost animal and you're just like freaking out, right? A lot of people have a lot of anxiety when that happens, when they just feel like, you know, they're moving around the gym, they don't know what they're doing. And that's one way to do it. It's just lack of preparation. So make sure you prepare yourself before you head near the gym, especially if you're on a time crunch. So those are some of the ways to just kind of get yourself going for the gym, right? Whether that's post-work, midday, or in the morning. Um, that's that. So what to do kind of before and during your workouts. Some of this is going to bleed into our conversation about gym etiquette. But I'm going to go through here and number one, like phones, like I have mobile app workouts, love them, right? You have to make sure that when you're on your phone, do not be sitting there on Facebook or reading email, right? You have to protect your time and your workout is that time, right? You wouldn't sit in an important board meeting that is, you know, might impact your financial status or your job status because it's that important to you. You wouldn't be on there surfing, hopefully, you know, with your with your boss sitting there going through Instagram and whatever, TikTok. Take your workouts just as serious as other things that you care for because if you're truly serious about your goals, that hour of dedicated focus is going to pay off, right? And if you don't do it now, like it's going to get much harder. So I want to just Avoid a lot of those common pitfalls. I see a lot of people at the gym who just sit on their phone in between. And I know it's you know it's in between rest periods, which I'll get to later. A lot of people are resting a really long time um, and they don't need to. So that's something that I would say, whether it's turning on airplane mode, whatever it is, you know, have your program, make sure you can access your program, and then you know, really draw some hard lines about doing other stuff. Turn your phone on silent, don't get messages, all that stuff unless they're like emergency and you have to. Uh, again, look at your program before you walk through the door. That's a big one there. Uh, kind of one over that. Another one here that's really going to be when you're in your session. And then also this is going to compound because after your sessions, you know, when you're briefing yourself for your following session, looking back at what you did, make sure you're tracking your workouts, right? It's It's super easy when I look back at a workout or have people come in and they look at, oh, how much did I do on the leg press last week? Um, you know, oh, I did 100 pounds for 888. Okay, I think I'm going to try and either do 100 pounds for 10s. Or maybe I'll go a little heavier. I'll see how it feels. But that's my plan of the day. They walk into the gym. They know exactly where they need to go, how many sets and reps they're doing, uh, and, you know, kind of the expectation of how much weight or reps they're shooting for. And that's something, again, that just minimizes a lot of extra anxiety and stress and downtime to really make your workouts more efficient. But have you been more confident? You know exactly what you're doing in there. And that's one of the biggest hurdles that beginners struggle with is they don't know what the heck they're doing in the gym, or at least they feel they don't. It's not because they're dumb. It's because they aren't prepared, right? And that's really what it is. If you go into a gym and you see some more advanced lifters, they either are on their program looking at it, or maybe even have a journal, but they've prepped themselves. They know exactly what they're doing that day, um, which also comes with having a program. Uh so going with that, track your rest periods. We talked earlier about rest periods. Um, if you have time to be surfing on social media and answering emails, taking calls, like 
two things are going to happen, right? You are going to quickly find yourself in that beginner class where other gym people are irritated at, right? So when, when you, there's a lot of negative about people who say, oh, you know, the New Year's crowd, they just come in and, and get the gym crazy. And it's not because people don't like people working on themselves, right? They don't like people who sit on machines, camp, take up forever, have poor gym etiquette, right? Because it messes with the ecosystem that they're doing there, right? That Those people were beginners at one point. They got to where they're at now where, you know, they've developed these habits, so for you as a beginner to roll in there, or if you're not a beginner and you're somebody who's doing these things, just know that it can be irritating for other people. So have some, some courtesy in that sense. If you're on a machine and you know, you're know you on your phone and you're resting super long and you're not tracking those, not only are you probably minimizing the workout effect of some of your workouts that rely kind of on building fatigue through shorter rest periods, you're making your workouts less efficient. So, you know, if you only have a time of an hour, you're not going to do as much as you could if you were being a little more efficient, right? And as a beginner, volume is probably the number one thing you can do to, to grow muscle and get fit is to just do more more work in that period. Um, and then lastly, it's just going to, it just detracts from everything, right? Like you lose your focus. You're, you're focusing on what Jimmy's doing and Sally's doing on TikTok versus am I feeling my quads in this, you know? What could I do differently next set, you know, or you, you know, after a hard set of leg presses, sometimes I just need a moment to sit there, right? And I don't even want to open my eyes. So if you're always having time to do that, you're just probably not training hard enough. And that's, that's something where it's like a very easy fix. Get off your phone, you know, unless you're looking at your program, take the time in between sets to focus on what you're doing. Make a plan of attack. Who seven was tough that time. I really got to mentally prepare myself to try and give my best effort here. And that that's a huge thing. And, and not only will that um, help your workouts, you're not going to be that person sitting around. And and that's kind of a normal pet peeve for most people. Is you know they're trying to you know big gym. They're trying to wait to get on a squat rack or they want to get on this machine. And you know there's somebody sitting there just on their phone, just chilling out. I, I've been there. I've, I've timed people just, you know, I haven't went up and said anything, but I've just sat there and I've been like, this person's literally resting four, four minutes and I've done four of my sets on something else. Um, and there's a reason why, you know, you, you know somebody who's been in the gym, they have results, they're putting the work in and you, you, you watch them work out, you see it's, it's not they're just doing random stuff and stopping and doing this and not concentrating. They are hyper-focused on what they're doing. And that's what it takes, right? If you really want to buy into this process. And it's as easy as just disconnecting. Um, while I'm still on there, um, so that's resting. Now on the flip side of it, you don't need to rest. I mean, you don't need to like run through your rest periods, right? Like you don't get awards for just never resting, right? Especially if you're trying to build muscle, mostly rest periods, 30, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, maybe 90 seconds, depending on how hard you're pushing, maybe even two minutes. Sometimes I don't even put myself on a clock if I'm doing like a hard squat workout. I'm just rest as long as I need to prepare myself to get after it. But if again, if you're resting and you're sitting there, you're not out of breath and you're just kind of on your phone, it's probably A, you didn't push your previous set hard enough and B, you've been resting too long or C, both. So that's kind of my, my take on rest periods. I think most people rest longer than they think 45 seconds doesn't seem like a long time because it's not but if you aren't tracking your rest periods on a clock you'll be amazed at how long you're actually sitting um and then uh last one here is really oh this goes back to kind of some gym etiquette but uh more of like if you if so a lot of beginners I notice and I like you can pick them out when they're not confident in the gym is their heads down, you know they're looking at the floor they're just kind of moseying around right, um, just and this might help your psyche a little bit is I know that might not be your arena where you're confident and that's okay I have arenas where I'm not confident in, but at the end of the day you know keep your head up smile make eye contact maybe that's just saying hi to the front desk. Maybe it's recognizing, you know, when you walk past, just give a head nod or, hey, what's up? It doesn't need to be creepy, right? I'm not telling you to be a creep and, you know, talk with random people and, and detract from their workouts. But sometimes 
you know, when I'm in an environment somewhere I don't feel comfortable, maybe it's just a matter of, hey, what's going on? Or like, hey, how's it going? Just just that, right? That's enough where maybe that person's feeling the same way. Boom, make connection and we feel a little better about ourselves because at the end of the day, we're all kind of it together. So if you're struggling with that like confidence or uh, you know, anxiety, if, you know, you feel like everyone's looking at you, address it head on. Hey, what's going on? You don't have to introduce yourself, right? Like I'm not saying be crazy that. Um, it could go as some, something as well as like if you're on a machine and you notice somebody's just like next to you, sharking, and maybe it's because you're sitting on your phone and you caught yourself like, oh gosh, they're probably getting mad because I'm sitting here forever. Ask them if they want to work in, right? Like two things are going to happen. That's a pretty vet move to ask somebody to work in. So when somebody, like I've done it where I've been there and I can tell somebody's, you know, just waiting and they're just sitting there. Hey, you want to work in? I got like two more sets left, three more sets left. Uh, if they say, yeah, most likely they've worked in with somebody else before. It's kind of unsaid, like they're going to know the etiquette. Like they get in there, I do my set, they get in there back and forth, natural flow of things, right? Like just take notes of like how much weight you're doing and how much weight they're doing. That way you can help with the pins if you need. Like I normally am always... You know, whether I'm working in with somebody or not, the second I'm done with my thing, you know, I'll change the pins out. Now, obviously, it depends on the machine, too. Like, a lot of machines, easy to change around. If I'm doing, like, back squats, somebody wants to work in with back squats, probably not the case. Um, but, you know, that's an easy way to just do that. And then the second part is if they say yes, right, it's a great way for you to, like, in between your rest periods, just to watch somebody else do their lifts. I'm not saying sit there and, again, don't be a creep. But you might learn some stuff. You might see them doing things. You might see them doing different tempos. That's a great way to learn more, right? Just by watching. Maybe you see how they're doing it and, you know, their muscles are, you know, popping, getting a great workout. And you're like, hmm, I wonder how I can do that. Maybe they're squatting lower than you. Whatever it is, those are all great ways to uh, just learn more, right? To kind of just imitate what's going on. Obviously, make sure it's, you know, there's a lot of bad form in there. So obviously there's some limitations on that. But if you find somebody, catch somebody with a good enough uh, form and technique, you might learn a couple things. And then you can also just ask them like, hey, I noticed you're squatting lower. Like, where are you feeling that? You, you can really learn a lot. I've learned a lot in my training career just working out with other people. Uh, sometimes people I don't even know and they might just show me one thing or I see them doing kind of a little twist down, a push down. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I try it. I'm like, oh, dang, that's great. So that's another tip there. If they say no, and they're like, oh, no, I'll wait. It doesn't mean you need to rush through your stuff, right? At that point, the ball's in their court. You've given them the option. You aren't the gatekeeper to holding them back, right? You allowed them to work in. They said no. That's on them. Again, don't be on your phone. Do your workout as planned, and then get off. Wipe down the machine and get off. So that's kind of uh, the last thing you could do uh, either during or, or you know before a workout to prepare yourself. Um so next we're going to go into gym etiquette rules. Some of this is going to just be like a continuation of that prior list. But these are some things, again, I've just been thinking about that is important to me and what I have my clients do. Um, and I know a lot of other trainers and just gym goers would be able to greatly appreciate beginners as well as just anybody in the gym doing these things. So the first one is clean up after yourself. Like just... I. I even understand like going to the gym and there's, it's just other people aren't cleaning up. So it's very easy just to say, okay, nobody else is. I'm not, I'm not saying you have to clean other people's messes up, right? Especially if you got there and there's a mess, maybe between your sets, just kind of like pick up a little bit, right? Um, people are going to notice that. And if they don't, it's just like, uh, not a character flaw of people, right? Like, I don't want to get that deep, but the lack of respect, whether it's a $10 a month, Planet Fitness or $100 a month or $300, just pick up, right? Like you aren't entitled to where you don't have to clean up after yourself. Like we all hopefully were raised clean up after yourself. We're in a, This is a communal gym, right? It's not your private gym. And if it is, I would still say clean up after yourself, right? Like have some organization, take pride in what you're doing. Um, so that's like number one, just clean up after yourself. What does that mean? Put your weights away on the right tree like if there's a weight tree don't put a five where the 25 goes right just put them in there put your bar back whatever it is clean down the surface wipe that down use some spray just clean it off right we're not we're not animals uh, I mean we are you know from like a time period but we're a little more sophisticated that clean up after yourself if you sweat all over the place awesome I sweat a lot too but clean that shit down so that, that right there will go a humongous way in most gyms and people will recognize 
who doesn't do that uh, more than who does. So just don't be the person who doesn't. Um, next one, uh, we kind of said that here, but if, if you are working on something and you're working really slow, you know, um, make sure you're not like on your phone just doing shit. Ask the person to work in, right? Ask them to work in. Whatever happens from there, awesome. Again, we've covered all that. If you are trying to get on something and you're noticing somebody who is, uh, so this happened the other day. I was waiting on a squat rack, right? And there is a young kid there squatting, doing like heavy doubles, right? Just max lifting, form was great, whatever. I'm not there to coach. But what I was noticing was it was like he'd be sitting down on the ground on his phone. And I knew because I was kind of like walking, just trying to see like kind of how there's a couple of racks now we're taking. Um, and we've all been there. We know when somebody is just sitting there, just wasting ass time, get up, go to the bathroom, come back. They're, they're still camping there, right? They're camping. So if that's the case and, you know, just simply go up like, Hey, I got, uh, how many more sets you got left? Don't like watch your voice. Just, Hey, I'm just wondering how many sets you got left. Um, for in that case, he was like, "Oh, I got one more." I was like, "Oh, sweet, okay, cool. Can I get have it after you?" And uh, sure. And boom, I just sat right there, waited, and like two minutes went past, and he did it right. Um, sometimes you'll have just people who are like assholes, and you know if that's the case, then just take the higher road and just wait somewhere else. Um, you know, make a mental note. But hopefully, there's not a lot out there. I know there is, but there's less out there than we think. A lot of people just aren't aware. They're in their own little bubble, right? They're He's squatting, right? He's maxing out his squat. He's lifting heavy. I've done it there afterwards. I'm blinder. So understand that, you know, their world's their world. Your world is your world. It's not about you. It's not about them. So just sometimes you might have to just have a, con uh, um, a conversation with them. Uh, other times, especially like if they're on like a machine or something, I notice, you know, they're just taking, you know, two, three minutes between it. And I know uh, I could move pretty quick. I'll just say, hey, man, like how many sets do you got left? Oh, I got four. Okay. Uh, hey, do you mind if I just work in? I'm like, I will, I'll stay out of your way. I'm just literally going to get in, get out. Nine times out of 10, they're going to say yes, like, or sure. And they'll probably be like, sure. They may or may not be receptive to it. But at that point, who cares? It's not their machine. When you are going through it, right? Like if you got to change a bunch of the settings, this and that, and change the pin, maybe just wait. But most of the time you shouldn't have to. Uh, and if you do that, every time you get off before it's their turn again, don't make them change the weight back. Don't make them change the seat back. You do that. So make a mental note. If you know they're doing 90 and you switch down to 60, put that peg back down to 90. Uh, that's just common etiquette, right? Because you kind of came into that world and they were on there. And obviously there was some first come, first serve. But you can all share. But that's just good general etiquette when working in with other people. Um, and I'm kind of going through my list here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so I mean, I think those are like the main etiquette pieces. Um, sorry, to recap, we kind of went through, you know, clean up after yourself, wipe down, stay off your phone, um, you know, track your rest periods from a workout perspective. And then also about like working in, asking to work in with people. All those are just general gym etiquette stuff. Um, I shouldn't have to go too much about like, you know, don't get in fights with people. Um, you know, if you're talking with somebody, you know, like, Ask questions if you want, right? Like obviously if somebody's in their own world and headsets are on and they got the stand off his face, which might be you, right? Like if you feel that way, great. Like sometimes people got to go there, beat their demons, whatever. I do it all the time. When I put my headphones on, typically it's kind of a sign of like, all right, like I'm, I'm in my world there, right? But if I'm off, you know, if I'm looking around, somebody's doing that, like they probably receptive to the conversation. If you're there and, you know, make a friend, right? Ask for a spot, um, whatever it is. If you see somebody doing something you got, you're curious about, Hey, I got a question. Why are you doing that? Right? It's a great way as a beginner to get yourself involved in that community. All right? Maybe make a friend. It makes it a lot easier if you just walk in. Oh, hey, what's up? Even if you know their name, I know I'll walk into a gym and I'll see a couple people. I'll give them a head nod. What's going on? It's 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 its own little community, right? Um, and just to be a part of that sometimes is enough to keep people coming back. And as you grow with that, your confidence grows, and and you can become more disciplined and stay on track with that. So. Just like anything, right? The gym is just a new arena. If I walked into a situation, maybe it wasn't the gym, but I'm just, I don't know. Like, the gym's taught me a lot of ways to be confident throughout life, but I don't know. Let's say it was like a, a banker's association, something I know nothing about, right? At least I'd walk in there and I would do common things, look people in the eye, I'd make sure I would be respectful. You know, I'd ask questions if I had questions. 
Um, maybe that's all it takes, right? That's as simple as it is. Just if you're a beginner, just understand nobody's like out there judging you, looking at you, um, unless you're just blatantly being an asshole or being mean or just completely unaware of things, right? And maybe that's more about maybe society is people are just so wrapped up in what they're doing, they're unaware of their surroundings. So just be a little more receptive to that. And sometimes that's just disconnect from your phone and forcing yourself to, to look around and be present. The last parts here, uh, I want to go through motivation, discipline, and kind of tying that into like your self-awareness of your journey and where you're at. So when it comes to motivation and discipline, the rules apply to beginners as they do to most people, right? I just think that when it comes to motivation, um, people, especially beginners, they are very receptive maybe to external things, right? And they maybe it's a playlist, maybe it's they see a video and they get that instant bump of motivation, right? Which is great. Uh, hopefully this is motivating some of you. Now, the drawback to that is as quickly as motivation comes, it can also fade. The difference between a beginner and somebody who's not a beginner is that they, they still both struggle with motivation at times. I, I very much have unmotivated days and motivated days is that the discipline between that, uh, when the motivation goes, we have the discipline to still do the things that we need to be doing. And that's the difference, right? Developing discipline to get through those unmotivated days. So, um, you know, I think it's accepting some harsh realities, um, whether you're a beginner or not. I think it's important to remind yourself that if you're in a situation and you're unhappy about maybe your physique or, or this and that, I'm sure there's circumstances, right? There, there's somebody else that may have it easier than you, might have it harder than you. Um, but at the end of the day, no one's going to change that situation that you're in except you, right? Like we all have decisions. We all have uh, things that we can be doing. And, and a lot of times, sometimes we overcomplicate that or we tell ourselves why we can't have that or we say, oh, it's I can't do this. I don't have time or I can't afford the $10 gym membership or uh, it's boring doing stuff in here. Whatever, whatever reasons why you're telling you can't have something, you have to understand that if, if you don't do it, no one else can do it for you, right? And if you ask for help and you're still doing that, I've I've had many people that have asked me for help and they continue to kind of live those fallacies. I just don't want to help them anymore, right? Like I got my own stuff I'm working on. People have their own stuff. You can lead a horse to water, but can't make them drink. Um, and that's kind of something where if, once you realize that if, if you're standing in your own way, the only way to get through that is to understand that no one's coming to save you. You have to do it. You're an adult. This is what growing up is. This is how dealing with life is sometimes, is meeting that head on. Um, so, you know, understanding the difference between motivation and discipline. Um, and that was something that, you know, it's it's really no easy answer, right? Some ways to get motivated, right? Have a program. Track your progress. See the progress. See the lack of progress. Do something about it, right? Like if you're low energy, right? Caffeine can help. Right? That's a popular performance enhancing pre-workout, whether it's coffee, this and that. Take five, 10 minutes before a workout, before sit in your car, look over your program, self-talk. All those things are great tools, but at the end of the day, you know, you could know your why, this and that. Just understand that if you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. And, and that's the reality. And if you want change, then go get it. Um, you know, I, I think another one here is, you know, a lot of times when we, we want to make change, there's sacrifices that need to happen. And we always look at, you know, we hear sacrifice and people take that as a net, uh, a net loss, right? I gave up this. I had to give up eating this or I had to, you know, go to bed earlier to work out in the morning or I couldn't go out and spend this money on drinks because I'm trying to save up for my trainer or this and that. If you're viewing it from that lens, you're probably not going to want to stick with it, right? And the reality is, yeah, sure, you can look at it from that lens or you can look at it as I'm choosing to go to bed early because I'm going to get some sleep because my I value the goals that I have for myself, for my body, for my mental health that I know will be a positive when I work out. I value that more than this instant gratification of me staying up watching this show, right? Or, you know, I can go out with my buddies instead of, you know, ripping through $50 worth of alcohol. I can go out, have $10 drink and go home, right? Or maybe I don't do that and I, you know, go to the gym and I find some other ways to uh, be social, right? Like you have to really be aware of all of these sacrifices that you're making and try to look at it and spin it as a positive. Um, and also understand that 
this might not be like a new way of life. It's just you're going through a, a short, very period where you're really overhauling, especially if you're a beginner and you're trying to get on board. Uh, sometimes it's helpful just to kind of like take that 60, 90 day period, really go all in, and then from there assess, you know, maybe I still like going out, so I'm going to add that back in here. Or maybe, you know, that, that latte in the morning, as much as I know it's not great with the calories, that brought so much joy to my life. It got my day going. Maybe I'll bring that back in. I'll figure out a way to, to make that better, right? But sometimes you just got to cut that and understand to have that discipline and that that sacrifice is not you're losing something you're just creating space to gain something else that might be more important to you um so you know we went through a lot of like tips tactics scenarios but at the under undermining all of this or the, through the deeper level is the self-awareness right so when you're feeling these feelings right maybe you roll into the gym and you feel like everyone's looking at you or this and that take a moment and and understand that, like, why are you feeling this way? Is it maybe fear of uh, fear of failing? Right? Like, you don't want to tell people, you don't want to get started because you don't want people to be talking about you. You know, hey, this guy's gonna fail, or this this girl's gonna fail, or maybe fear of rejection. Maybe you do all this positive work, and you know, because you're you know trying to you know whatever for whatever goal that you have, um, gain confidence in that, and then you go on a date and you get turned down. Whatever those fear of rejection, fear of failure. Maybe thinking it's going to be too complicated and you you can't have this. Whatever it is, I think a it's important to recognize those are normal feelings, and b it's it's important to recognize that while they're normal, um, everyone kind of struggles with those. You might have more or less, but that's part of the game. And you just once you recognize that that is just a a thought in that moment, move past it, right? Like how do you get through fear of failure? Well. No one became successful out of the gates. And if they did, they probably weren't pushing themselves hard enough, right? Every great person fails. Um, and you learn a lot more from failure, I think, than you do success, or at least just as much. Uh, fear of rejection. If you're getting rejected, like, you know, ask yourself, too, like, who's rejecting you? Like, maybe there's a whole different platform that you're trying to get approval from other people. But I think if you're out seeking approval, um, there's probably some other things going on there and the gym is probably one way where I love the gym it's an equalizer because it doesn't care who you are what you look like how much money you have the iron doesn't care and it teaches a lot of people and it humbles a lot of people and that's why I love the gym for that process um, so you use the gym to just have have that be your safe space and then allow it to, to foster your growth foster your confidence and that's something that anybody can gain from there um, you know uh, know yourself in certain situations so again we'll go back to you know if a lot of these emotions come up when you walk into a crowded gym which i you know i've had clients say you know hey why did why'd you come train with me they've went to these crowded gyms and they would just get anxious they'd be uh, feeling like an imposter they'd you know be scared that somebody would say something to them all these big gym rats so what they do they found a small private gym was it a little more expensive yeah it was right that's kind of like kind of why a lot of these 10 dollar gyms are super crowded they're inexpensive but for them it was you know I'm going to sacrifice maybe spending 50 bucks a week on, on booze on the weekend and put it towards my gym cost, right? Those are little things that they eliminated that feeling just by changing the environment. Sometimes they don't know what they're doing, right? Hire a coach, get on a program, do some more research, have somebody there to help you. And it might cost money and that's part of it, right? Like I have had to learn a lot about business. I've had to learn a lot about like investing. Like I build a business to make money and I invest it to you know obviously foster other areas of my growth with my real estate, things that I wasn't confident in, right? Maybe you're listening to this and that's your forte, your finance, real estate. I had to do a lot of my own research, find my own people, obviously pay some of that to kind of get that knowledge the same way you might have to do in the fitness. And so view that as that's kind of the trade-off in life. And maybe that's the solution is to to reallocate funds and invest in this part for you, especially if you're a beginner. And that's something that brings you stress. That might be something you want to look at. Uh, not wanting to look stupid in a gym, right? Like, why would you look stupid? Let's break it down. You're ill-prepared. You're sitting on your phone and, you know, people are getting angry at you. Now you're, you're feeling like all stupid. Those are easy ways to combat, right? Be prepared. We just talked about a whole podcast, how to prepare yourself for your workouts. And then understand that, uh, it's so cliche, I'm sure everyone's heard this, but everyone's been a beginner, right? Going back to beginners, a lot of benefits being a beginner. You can get by with, you know, doing majority of things decently well and have great results, right? 
Obviously, if you continue doing those things, you have to progress. And But beginner gains are real, right? Small adjustments over time, that's what it is. I think being impatient as a beginner, as an advanced lifter, um, is something that you know I, I see a lot. I see a lot of beginners who maybe overthink the process, right? They're, what program should you do? Should I do 10 sets of three or three sets of six? Or, you know, what about periodization? Unper- they go into the, the, the catacombs and the deep vaults of exercise science, but they haven't even just worked out consistently for nine months, three to four days a week, doing compound training most muscle groups one to two times a week. The basics. So master the basics. Don't get caught up in, the, in that stuff. Uh, don't get caught up in the fads. People make a business on doing that, right? Like all these, you know, challenges and eat keto or eat this and that. Like if you're a beginner, just get on the train of just knowing, hey, just eat protein, work out consistently, let it happen, enjoy the process and learn as you grow. So if you can just become self-aware and do that stuff, I think you'll you'll you really be able to get yourself on the on the right path. Um, and this is also could go for anybody, not even a beginner, somebody just resetting, if they will. So I, I challenge you guys to take these tips that we went through and uh, commit to maybe like 90 days, like three months and just say, you know, get out, outline these key things that you're going to do and just say 90 days, the end of this, I'll reevaluate where I'm at and, uh, and, and you can modify or you can take things out, put things in that you like and don't like and just continue to grow. But I guarantee if you do this, not only will you, your fitness will improve, your confidence will improve inside and out the, outside the gym, and you'll look back at this a year later like my client did and have things that you look back upon that maybe you stressed about that you found solutions to and that's empowering you know, that you kind of got yourself up out of that hole. And then, you know, you'll be able to maybe one day, you know, ride the, put that elevator back down, which is a great term I heard, which was, you know, you got somewhere to a higher level, send the elevator back down. Maybe it's helping somebody else out. Maybe it's letting somebody work in with you. Maybe it's, you know, seeing a beginner, recognizing them, looking around like you were a year ago and just give them a head nod. So pass it on there. Uh, Let me know what you guys think. If you guys are listening to this on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to it, I appreciate the support. Um, Give me a subscribe, give me a like, comment below if you're on YouTube. If not, check it out on YouTube. We have the whole video uh, stream in there. So I appreciate the support. And until next time, try some of these hips out. Keep working out. I'll see you later.